verse 1 through 6. Second, chapter 8, verse 1 through 6. Brother John, sister, she's great. I want to help. Yeah, help me out here. Then spake Eli Elias. Then Elijah spake Elijah. Unto the woman. The woman uh -huh. Whose son he had restored to life. Saying, Arise and go down in thy household. And so journey whatsoever thou canst sojourn, for the Lord had called for a famine, and it shall also come upon the land seven years. And the woman arose and did after the saying of the man of God, and she went with her household, and sojourned in the land of the Philistines seven years. And it came to pass at the seven years end. That the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines. Yes. And she, and she went forth. She went forth to cry unto the king for her house and for her land. You hear that, sister? Love went to the king to right, cry for her house and for her land. Yeah. I remember back in the uh, early 70s, there was a very uh, popular message Brother Trevor would preach on. I want my house back. How I many you want your house back? Yes, sir. Yes. Cry. She didn't, she didn't go to the uh, uh, lower officials, but she went straight to the king. And that's what we need to do. Go straight to the king. Tell him, I want my house back. That's what Sister Love talked about coming to this house. Well, I want this house back so he can come into it. Don't you tell me? And let the verse six. And the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God. Yes. And tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elijah had done. And it came to pass as he was telling the king how he had restored a dead body to life. That behold, a woman wrote, a woman whose son he had restored to life, cried to the king for a house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My lord, O king. This is the woman, and this is her son, whom Elijah restored to life. And when, the, and when the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed unto her a certain officer, yes. saying, Restore all that was hers. And See, that's what God's going to do to us. He's going to appoint to us. Amen. You know, the Holy Ghost. Yes. And the Holy Ghost is going to Restore to us. Yeah. Go ahead. And all her fruits. Everything we lost. Uh huh. Of the field since the day that she left the land, even until now. Everything. You know, we have gone through a storm. Some of y'all wasn't around. I was, I was asking Laquilla. I said, Laquilla, who is that man that died today? That, uh, she said, What man? I said, Well, he used to play with Rocky. And uh, I think he died today. He said, who is Rocky? I said, I'm sorry, for I forgot you were not born back in the day. <laughs> I keep getting on track. <laughs> Man, that's something for this generation don't even know who Rocky is. <laughs> Da -da -da. Brother Phil used to have one of those great big old buses. And he brought it over there on 36 Street North. And uh, that was the music. Da -da -da -da. And when he would put in it, they'd put in. And he, I don't know how he squeezed that big old bus over there in that little bitty place on 36 Street North. But we knew when he got in, because we heard that music. Da -da 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 -da. That's when Rocky was strong. <laughs> Back in them days. But who was that man that... Huh? Who? Well, whoever he was. He uh, died. I think today. And, uh... But, uh... Anyway... And I got to talking about it, I forgot what that train was about. <laughs> huh? Yeah, that's right. 
And that's what uh, Rocky did, I don't know how many times. Got his house back, got his crown back, lost it, but he got it back. Didn't he? And that's what we need to climb into this rain and get our house back. Get in here, get ready to fight the devil, and get back everything the devil stole from us. Yeah. Let's go to Joel chapter 1 and verse 1 through 4. It's okay if I take my time here to be tonight. Yeah. Joel chapter 1, verse 1 through 4. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of the uh, people. Uh huh. Here it is, the old man. Yes. And give here, all you inhabitants of the land, had this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers, tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation, uh -huh. that which the, the palmer worm had left. Listen, that which the, what? The palmer worm. The palmer worm. Had left. Y'all know what the palmer worm is. That's the one that go around chewing up everything. He chews the leaves. Choose up everything. That which the tunnel worm had the locust had eaten. left. Had the locust eaten. Had the locusts. They're the one that's swarming. You know, they swarms. And they get whatever the tunnel worm had left. Uh huh. And that which the locust had left. And that which the locusts had left. Had the caterpillar, the, the canker worm eaten. Had the what? Canker worm. They were crawling ones. They're the ones that go around crawling. And, and, and what the uh, other two have left, here come the uh, canker worm. And he crawls and get everything that's left. Uh huh. And that which the canker worm had left. That which the canker worm had left. Had the caterpillar eaten. Had the what? The caterpillar eaten. Caterpillar. Ca caterpillar, he go and get the bark. <laughs> he he makes sure everything is gone. And that's the kind of storm we've been through spiritually. You know, we've lost. I'm talking about we have gone through some kind of storm since the 70s. And there have been one, it used to be, they used to be called holiness people. And after so many years, people got ashamed of that word holiness. And then they, they felt more comfortable with the word Pentecostal. Didn't they? And after they, um, you know, we, we just saw it declining from holiness, Pentecostal, and then came the um, charismatics. You know, it's like these worms. Every revival, instead of increasing, we decrease in spiritual things. And after this charismatic movement, then come this hyper grace. Didn't it? And some people got so high on grace until they figured grace covered everything. Until they become deep sensitized. And they didn't feel no conviction about nothing. What grace gonna come? What grace done? What grace done? This high for grace. Mess folks up. And then come um, inclusiveness. Highly dimension with all this inclusion. And that means everybody was, whether you got saved or not, you was included. Y'all see how the devil come in? Now we got this new wave. And things have declined until even the bark with a little bit people have had, everything seems to be taken away. <coughs> Through the years. But you know God promised us. That would be a restoration. He would restore all things. Read uh, Joel. Chapter 2. Verse 12 through 14. Book of Joel. Chapter 2. Verse 12 through 14. Therefore also now. Therefore also now. Said the Lord. Uh huh. Turn ye even to me with all your heart. Turn to me with all your heart. And with fasting. And with fasting. And with weeping. And weeping. And with mourning. And with mourning. And rent your heart. Rent your hearts. And not your garments. Not your garments. And turn unto the Lord your God. Turn to God. 
For he is gracious. He's gracious and merciful. Merciful. Slow to anger. Slow to you know, I don't know about I don't know if the nations are going to the point of no return or not. But this is for God's people. Even if the nation has gone to that point where they can't get, I don't know, but I do know God is telling us in the midst of this nation, turn to him. Uh-huh. And of great kindness. And with great kindness. And repented him of the evil. Yes. Who knows? Who knows? If he will return and repent. Yes. And leave a blessing. And leave a blessing behind him. Yes. Even a meat offering. Is this still verse 14? Yes, sir. Go ahead. And a drink offering. A meat offering. I mean, y'all need a meat offering. Yes. You know, Jesus said, Tell me in my flesh. Yes. That's what I'm talking about, a meat offering. Yes. And a drink offering. Yes. Except to drink my blood. Yes. Have more life in you. Leave a meat offering, uh huh. And a drink offering. And a drink offering. Unto the Lord your God. To the Lord your God. A storm. We've been through a storm since the 70s. It looks like everything has been taken away. Read verse 23 through 27. Be glad then. Be glad then. You children of Zion. Uh -huh. And rejoice in the Lord your God. Yes. For he hath given you the former rain. He's given you the former rain. Moderately. Moderately. And he will cause to come down for you. Yes. The rain. The rain. The former rain. The former rain. And the latter rain. And the latter rain. In the first month. Yes. All of this is to be, he said, of this I will be inquired of. All of this, we need to be waking up our spiritual taste for this. Telling God, I need all of this. I need these three different visitations. Don't we? Is that the verse 27? Go to verse 27. And the floor shall be full of wheat. Uh-huh. And the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. Yes. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten. Uh-huh. The canker worm and, yes. the, and the caterpillar. All these movements. Yeah. I mean, what well, people don't even believe in holiness anymore. All these movements. I don't know if I want to say what I'm fixing to say right now. Women don't even. A lot of them don't believe in wearing dresses no more. Do they? Everybody. Well, go ahead. I mean, you can. Well, go ahead on. Go ahead on. I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten. I will restore to you the years the locusts had eaten. I remember growing up um, way back when women used to wear bobby socks and long skirts. Y'all remember that? Oh, no, I'm too God. <laughs> I'm sorry. Y'all don't remember all of that. Huh? Put my glasses up. Anybody here? I don't see nobody here that remember when women used to wear bobby socks. We're just one person. Used to wear bobby socks and long skirts, pleated skirts, is they. Huh? Well, let me say this. Is anybody here when women used to wear mini skirts? High pants. <laughs> you see what we've gone from? <laughs> from long, pleated skirts, body socks, to high pants and mini skirts and all this other. See how the, the locusts was coming? Let's go to let's go to church. So go to work. Let's go ahead. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten. I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten. And the canker worm. And the canker worm. And the caterpillar. And the caterpillar. And the palmer worm. And the palmer worm. My great army, which I sent among you. My mind. You shall eat it plenty. God said, "I will restore all of this back to you." Three different visitations. God promised. He said, of oh, this time we'll be reminded of. Remind me. Inquire of me concerning the early rain. 
the rain and the latter rain. I'm going to restore it all back to you. It's my promise to you. But it goes farther than that. Read uh, Ezekiel chapter 37 <coughs> and verse 9. Ezekiel 37 and verse 9. Then said he unto me. Then said he unto me. Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy to the wind. Prophesy, son of man. Prophesy, son of man. Say to the wind. Say to the wind. Thus said the Lord God. Thus said the Lord God. Come from the four winds. Come from the four winds. O breath. O breath. And breath up, 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 up. Breathe upon these slain. Breathe upon these slain. That they may live. That they may live. Now right here, he's talking about four different visitations. From the east, from the north, from the south, from the west, this is that perfect storm. Right. Like a trigger yes, that come in, wipe everybody out. Yeah. We need something to come in and wipe out all this old flesh. Yes, all this old world and the storm. Yes, perfect storm. Yeah. From the east, from the north, from the south, from the west. Four different directions. Amen. Sometimes what is that four point, Brother Blue? It's this um, what Hebrews Paul spoke about in Hebrews. He spoke about that that was going to be um, the, the 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 church, the last age, and uh, in one of the uh, words it speaks about the um, oh I, I wish I could think of the name of it. About the um, age, the powers of the age to come. Well, that's the uh, fourth wind. The powers of the age to come. The last move. Can you imagine what they received on the day of Pentecost? Come from one direction. But this time, it's going to come from four different directions. The uh, early rain. The former rain, the latter rain, and the powers of the age to come. That is everything. God finna throw everything at us. He finna send the fullness of his power. That's why he's telling us we need to get in here and contend. We need to get in here. He wants to give us something. That haven't been given, that is going to exceed what happened on the day of Pentecost. That was the first, that's the earlier, that I mean, that's the, the earlier rain. He's going to give us something that's going to exceed what happened back in uh, 1906. They call that the, um, Rain. And then he's going to give us something that's going to exceed what we have got in these latter years. The latter rain, we call it. The last outpouring. But he's also going to give us something that the powers of the age to come. Something beyond anything that. that have even been given in any age. It, it's going to exceed what they got in Acts chapter 2. Going to exceed what people got in 2000. I mean, in 1904, 1906. Going to exceed what they got in this great healing revival in the foreigners. Exceed. Can you imagine what I'm finna say now? Exceed. Even. What we got, 1967, Jesus stood in Brother Turner's hand. So I'm giving you the revelation of Peter, Paul, and John. And now in the book of Hebrews, he said, the powers of the age to come. My God. Paul even spoke about the exceeding greatness of his power. Didn't he? Exceeding something that's going to exceed anything we've got 
the perfect storm coming from the south, from the north, from the east, from the west. And he told us to get in here, hunger for it, pray for it. Like I was telling y'all on May Tuesday night about in uh, Luke chapter 2, how that uh, Anna, she was a young lady married and her husband died while she was still young. And she came and packed her clothes and moved inside of the temple, inside of the church. And she brought her what clothes she had with her. And she prayed and tarried and sought God and gave her life to the Lord, you know, until she was 84 years old. She was just in her 20s oh, wow. when she first came in. There. But she just gave her life to God, didn't she? Yes. Hallelujah. That's what I want to do. Yes. Just give the rest of my life to God. I ain't got no wife on my mind. You know, what he needed is a wife. <laughs> what I need, mean, Jesus said, I'm your husband. Man, if God give me somebody down the road, but right now, I ain't down the road and I ain't looking down the road. I want to just give the rest of my years to God in prayer, like Anna did. Look at in the Bible did. You know, we don't have that much time left, do we? We need to give God these years, these latter years of our life. He that is married, let it be as though he's not married. Is that what the scripture says? Give your life to God as though you wasn't married. Shout out to him. Well, I'm going to go. I'm getting quiet and quiet. We better go somewhere else in this Bible. <laughs> But a perfect storm, a perfect storm, God hit us from up there, a rushing mighty wind coming, and God hit us from every direction in every area of our life. It's coming. Because he told us in Ezekiel 37, it's coming. Prepare yourself. Yes, Jesus. Get ready. It ain't that far off. <coughs> he said, my desire for you is to give you an expected end. Yes, hallelujah. Didn't he? The day you search for me yes. with all your heart, you'll find me. And I want to give you an expected end. Yes. I want to give you something to expect. Yes. Something beyond Anything that you have even imagined. Thank you, Jesus. Can you imagine something that eyes haven't seen? Ears haven't heard? Has entered into our heart the powers of the age to come. The powers of the age that God is thinking to unleash upon us. I'm talking about something that angels is, is eager to want to look into. Scripture says, even the angels, you want to look into this, what God has reserved for us in this last day. Right, right, right. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Angels, you think they have seen about everything, but they ain't seen this. Yes. Hallelujah. They ain't seen what God fixes to do in your time, in your generation. Get ready. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. That's what she said to the king. I want my house back. The king said, go and give her everything she's lost in the past seven years. Multiply. He said, give us seven times as much. That's what I'm talking about. God won't give us seven times as much. Isn't he? Seven times as what is right there in Isaiah chapter 11. About the seven spirits of God. Seven times as much. We need it. The Bible says Satan is going to come at you uh, 
When you, the devil is going out and they come back. And he bring with him what? Seven spirits more worse than himself. Well, that's what God said. I want to meet him. I'm going to give you seven times as much. Right. A restoration. She said, I want my house back. Right. Huh? Amen. How many of you want your first love back? Yes. Don't you want your prayer life back? Yes. Don't you want your faith back? Yes. Don't you want the power of God back? Yes. Well, this restoration is going to bring in all of this. It's going to bring in these nine gifts of the Spirit. Hallelujah. It's going to bring in that anointing back in our lives. A lot of people like Samson have lost their anointing. I'm going to restore it back, God says. I'm going to give it back. Some people have lost their dedication. I'm going to restore back the dedication. Some have lost their consecration. I'm going to restore it back your consecration. I'm going to give you back everything. The devil has taken from you. The woman said, I left everything on your word. And now I come back. Somebody else is in my house. Somebody else is eating out of my barn. Somebody else is eating out of my storehouse. Somebody else is sleeping in my bed. I want my house back. I want my prayer life back. The devil then took all of our trophies and he hanged them up. Said, that person used to have this kind of anointing. That person used to have this gift. That person used to have this kind of power. I have taken it off. Well, we need to, we need all of these trophies taken back from the devil and given back to God's people. And y'all ready to think, come to steal, kill, and destroy? That's what he does through these worms. That's what he does through all of these different things. Let's go to um, Joel chapter 2 and verse 25. Joel chapter 2 and verse 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten. Uh huh. And the canker worm and the caterpillar. Yes. And the palmer worm. Uh huh. My great army which I sent among you. Yes. You shall eat in plenty uh -huh. and be satisfied. Yes. And praise the name of the Lord your God. Uh huh. That hath dealt wondrously, wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I'm going to restore back all these wasted years. Some of you have been prophesied to, told that God's going to use you. You was going to do this and do that. And it seemed like the years has been wasted. And you ain't getting no younger. All of these things God has said, like the devil has come in and he has taken it from him. Well, God said, I'm going to give back. You may not get it. You may not get back that waistline you had. You may not get that hair that have, you know, backslid. <laughs> you may not get back. What I'm saying is, in the natural, you might want to look uh, young again and this and that. He said, I'm going to restore back spiritual things. I'm going to restore back the things that you have lost in your spiritual realm. You know, I'm going to give you back your joy. I'm going to give you back the health that you had. I'm going to give you back the peace. I'm going to give you back the fire that used to burn in your bones. I'm going to give you back the boldness that you used to have. I'm going to put back that thirst for me. I'm going to give you back your hunger. I'm going to give you back that love, that first love. I'm going to give you back that innocence where you were free from the world. And all the cares of this life, all you wanted was me. I'm going to give you back that purity. I'm going to give you back all these things. Yes. I want my house back. Yes. I want that power back. All of these things, the thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy. But God said, I'm going to restore it back to you. 
Huh? Seven times. Seven times. Everybody wasted. Look back on your life. I should have done this for God. I should have been doing this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna restore all that you wasted. All them years when there hadn't been a revival. When there haven't been, you know, them years that when the tent was up. Well, you could have took advantage, you didn't. But now the tent is gone. But I'm gonna restore it all back to you. I'm gonna bring it all back. Don't sell it for anything less than what God promised us in the Word. Don't look and sell it for anything less. Huh? Is that right? Read over there again. Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet. Why he's getting reading that? Someone else did Matthew chapter 17 and verse, I believe 12, I'm not sure. But go ahead. Behold, I send you uh -huh. Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Yes. And he should. Is that Malachi 4 verse 5? Yes. Yes, sir. Read verse 4. Remember ye the law of Moses. Now look at him. He's talking about two great men right, right close to each other. Remember the law of Moses. My servant. My servant. Which I commanded unto him. Which I, when the mark of the beast come, when you can't buy, when you can't sell, when if you don't bow down, he said, remember the law. Remember, I have said that thou shalt have another God before me. I'm sending you back that Moses anointing, that Moses spirit, where when the whole world is bowing down, you're going to have my commandments in your heart, in your life, and you're not going to bow when, it's, when they'll cut your head off if you don't. He said, remember, the law of Moses, you're not going to bow, you're not going to sell your soul, you're not going to give in. To all this other stuff. Moses is coming back. His word that God gave him. I mean, it wasn't the, the commandments. It was all these rituals and all these ceremonies that we got that was done away with. But not these original commandments. So I'm like, we don't believe in the commandments. Well, let me ask you a question. Thou shalt have another God before me. You don't believe that? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. How? Oh, we sure believe that. And all of these other ones. Somebody said, what about the Sabbath? Well, don't you believe that he blessed the Sabbath forever? Thou shalt. And, and all of them, read this commandment and show me one of them what God ever done away with. He done away with Well, he told us in Revelation. These are they that keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus and have the faith of Jesus. See, read your Bible. Hallelujah. Read that verse 4 again. Remember ye the law of Moses. Yes. My servant. Uh-huh. Which I command. See, God didn't take them away. He wrote them in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. He took his word and read it and wrote it into our hearts. Yes, Go ahead. Which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel. Uh-huh. With the statutes and judgments. Yes. Behold, I will send you Elijah. See, I'm not just going to uh, restore what Moses brought, but I'm going to send you who? Elijah. Elijah. Uh-huh. The prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. See, these are the two witnesses that God fixing to raise up. These are the two ministries that God fixing to Y'all remember Moses, how those ten plagues come on the children of Israel? And he was the word that he gave God's people that kept him during those plagues. Well, that kind of power is going to be restored and delivered to us. The, the, you know, no plague is going to be able to destroy us. That's what I'm talking about. Moses' ministry is coming back. And when all of these things come up on the face of the earth, God's going to have a people that's going to be kept. 
when plagues is everywhere, when the firstborn is dying, when the waters is turning to blood, when all of these Sioux warriors is coming, God's going to have a people that's going to be kept. That's what the law of Moses did. It kept the people. Go ahead, finish that. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. Yes. And the hearts of the children to their fathers. Who, who is that going to do that? Behold, I will send you Elijah. Elijah. Come on. The prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Yes. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to their children. Uh huh. And the heart of the children to their fathers. Go turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. The hearts of the fathers. The fathers. On the day of Pentecost, the fathers was the children. I'm not going to go into that, but Peter, John, and all of these, they were the, they were, they were, they gave, they gave birth. They were the, so much the children. And the fathers, you know, were um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But now, these men in the book of Acts that uh, birthed this revival, they have become the fathers. And we have become the children. And God said, I'm going to restore. You read that again? And he shall turn the heart of the fathers. He go, God said, I'm going to turn the hearts of the fathers. To the children. To the children. In the heart of the children. The heart of the children. To their fathers. To their fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. I'm sending you Moses. I'm sending you Elijah. I'm sending you these two witnesses that I spoke of in Revelation. I believe it's chapter 11. See, forget about these things. Who are these two witnesses if they're not Moses and Elijah? Who is it that appeared to Jesus on Mount Transfiguration? Moses and Elijah. These two ministries is coming back in play, coming back in the picture in these last days. Go ahead, finish. Was that all in there? Praise God. I thought it should be all up now. But it's still coming. That was in Malachi. Is that through verse 6? Okay, read Matthew chapter 17. And I believe that said verse 12, 11. Read verse 12. But I say unto you. But I say unto you. And Elijah has come already. Elijah has come already. And they knew him not. They didn't know him. But have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Uh huh. Likewise shall also the Son of Man what suffer. What verse is that? Read the verse above that letter. And Jesus answered and said unto them, uh -huh. Elijah truly shall first come. See, he's still coming. Elijah truly shall first come. And restore all things. See, that is. And restore all things. That is a restoration we've got to have. Before Jesus can come back, the church has got to be restored. The faith has got to be restored. The power has got to be restored. All that God gave us has got to be restored. And I'm going to send Elijah, and he shall restore all things. Uh-huh. See, okay, I'm, I'm giving you the word. I'm giving you nothing but the scriptures. Elijah is coming. Elijah is coming. And restore all things. His ministry is coming. Moses' ministry is coming. And restore the power over these plagues that are to be turned loose upon the earth. These two ministries is going to come forth and they're going to minister, you know, from the Middle East out of Jerusalem. But they'll, you know, it was Moses' ministry that God poured out upon the 70 elders. And they prophesied and ministered upon that anointed of Moses. It was Elijah anointed that was put upon Elisha. And Elisha went and did twice as much as Elisha. Well, that's what is God going to bring in these two ministries. And out of these two ministries is going to come these anointed ones. These two olive trees. And out of these two olive trees is going to come many olives. And we are going to be the olives. And we are going to demonstrate and manifest the power that God has promised the powers of the age to come that angels desire to look into there's a power that seems to be unleashed upon his earth whether you believe it or not right. 
And I thought I lost some of y'all. Let's read a little bit more. Is that okay? Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Read Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent. Repent. Ye therefore. Ye therefore. And be converted. And be converted. Repent. Turn around. Change. Quit going the direction you're going. And turn back toward me. Turn back toward truth. Turn back toward the cross. Repent. And what? Be converted. And be changed. Be converted. Be converted. I used to give an illustration how that uh, on 36th Street North in Tulsa, there was a, a wash house. People used to go in there and wash their clothes. But it closed down. And then we went in there and we uh, tore down all the washers, dryers, and all the other stuff. And we converted it into a church, didn't we? Converted that wash house into a church. You know, that's what conversion is, is when you change things. Go inside and tear out everything. I mean, there were pipes all in the middle of the floor and everywhere. But we went in there and, and, and took all those pipes out of the floor and took all that other stuff that was in the walls and converted it into a church. Well, that's what God said. Repent and let everything inside of you. He said, you be converted. Convert. Clean up all of that. Root down. Or one prophet said, Root up, tear down, rebuild, replant until nothing is there but just the empty building where I can come in, walk in you, live in you, talk in you. People coming up to that place used to be a wash house and they saw everything was tore out, everything had changed, didn't they? And then come back and they saw that people's souls start getting washed. People's lives start getting transformed. People start getting saved and start getting delivered. And that old wash house that would wash clothes is now washing souls, now washing people's minds, making them a new creature in Christ Jesus. But God said, I want you to be converted. I want you to be converted. Not just go inside and just wipe things off and go inside and just clean up a few things. But tear down and root up and rebuild and replant. That's what Jeremiah said. Everything needs to be torn down. We need everything to rebuild inside. There's coming a move of God's spirit and it can't move. You can't put the wire in old bottles. Get rid of all that which is old. There's something new that God said. I'm going to do a new thing. Huh? I want my house back. I lost things down the road. I want that hunger back. I want that anointing back. I want that power back. I want what, what was given back in the book of Acts. I want that power that was given in 04 and 06. I want them signs and wonders and miracles that was given back to these great men that God raised up in the 40s and 50s. I want it. I want it. I want it. I want, it. I want everything that God has for me because the devil has come down to this earth and he's coming to destroy. He's coming to put a mark on your right hand, on your forehead. I want, I, I want God to restore what Paul preached. Paul said, uh, you are a, uh, he began to tell us in Ephesians chapter, I believe it's chapter 6, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. I want God to make me strong in his armor. I want my feet shod with the gospel. I want the hand of the salvation, the sword of the spirit, the breastplate of righteousness. I want to be filled with all the fullness of God. I want to be filled with all the fullness of God. I want to be filled not just with excitement, not just with an emotion, but I want everything that God's got for us. He said, I'm sitting in the perfect store. I'm sitting something that you're going to want as God. You're going to 
come on with as men, but yet God is going to be in you. God's going to be manifest. They, so they said in the book of Acts, the gods have come down to us. It's not going to be the gods has come down. It's the power of God and restored. We're going to be a church. I'm coming back to a church without spot, without blemish, without reaper, without any of these things. Full of faith, full of power, full of the Holy Ghost, without sickness, without disease. I'm getting rid of the spots. I'm getting rid of the blemishes. I'm getting rid of the wrinkles. I'm getting rid of all these shortcomings. I'm coming back to a church. Hallelujah. I want my house back. I want my dedication back. I want power back. I want the anointing back. I want that word of faith, gift of prophecy, tongue, interpretation. I want all the, the discerning of the spirits. I want all of this back. I want them seven spirits of God. I want all of this back. I want the fullness of God. Bible said in him dwell all the fullness of the God in, and you are complete in him. I want to be complete in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My plan for you is not to destroy you, but to give you an expected end, give you something to pray for, give you something to expect, give you something to look forward to get in here. I, I have something special for you. That's what he did. Went straight to the king. Oh my house. Look at somebody. Come on back. Everything. The thief. Soul. Come to see him. Kill him. I want it back. Huh? I want it all back. Want it. It's going to take it. We're going to have to hunger for it. We can't have that passive faith like I was saying this morning. We got to be like the blind man. The blind man said, when he heard it was Jesus coming by, he said, Jesus, have mercy. And he lifted his voice until Jesus stopped. The woman with Isha blood, Isha blood, she pressed away, saying, it ain't going to come by just sitting back thinking God's going to drop in our lap. We got to hunger. We got to thirst. We got to wake up. We got to seek. You shall find, not, it shall be open, and it shall be given. I want my house back. I want everything that God's given me, and I want all the power of the last day to be able to stand up against the false prophet, to stand up against the Antichrist, to stand up against the beast. You got to have it all. You can't just have a part of it. You got to have it all. Hallelujah. Yeah. Can I five more minutes? Huh? Let's go ahead and book of Joel. Again. Book of Joel, chapter 2. And start at verse 1. All the way down to verse 7. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Blow the trumpet in Zion. And sound an alarm. Sound an alarm. In my holy mountain. Blow the trumpet in Zion. The sons of God, the churches, the chosen. Blow the trumpet. Wake them up. Sound the alarm. Man, we need something sound. Huh? How I many of y'all got those uh, alarms in your house? Somebody break it in. The alarm goes off. Well, you need an alarm in your house. ADT. <laughs> you need something in your house to alert you. When the devil is trying to come in like a thief in the night. You need something in your house to wake you up when you sleep. Yes. Sound the alarm. Go ahead. In my holy mountain. In my holy mountain. That all the inhabitants of the land tremble. That all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord coming. The day of the Lord comes. For it is nigh at hand. That's what it is. The day of the Lord is upon us. The day that God is fixing to judge everything. The day that God is fixing to bring in 
All of his promises. Uh -huh. A day of darkness. A day of darkness. And of gloominess. Gloominess. A day of clouds. There are clouds. And of thick darkness. Thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains. But look at here. In the midst of all this thick darkness, as the morning spreads upon the mountains. Huh? The morning spreads upon the mountains. There's a rising up. Go ahead. A great people. A great people. And a strong. And a strong. That have not been ever. That have not been ever. That's going to be a great people that are strong. That's never been. Go ahead. The light. Neither shall be any more after thee. Neither shall be any more after thee. Even to the years of many generations. To the years of many generations. A fire. A fire. Devoured before them. Devoured. My word shall be in your mouth like fire. The fire is going to devour before them. That word is going to burn up all the chaff. It's going to burn up all diseases. It's going to burn up all the works of the devil. A fire is going to be in your mouth. Huh? You hear me? That word don't be in you like fire. That's what one man said in your word. Like fire. Shut up in my bone. That word is going to be shut up in your bone. And it's going to consume all this evil, all this perversion, all these diseases, all this wickedness. Go ahead. Behind them a flame burning. Behind them a flame burning. The land is as the Garden of Eden. The land is like the Garden of Eden. Before them. Before them. And behind them. Behind them. A desolate wilderness. A desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. Nothing's going to escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. Appearance is like the appearance of horses. And as horsemen, so shall they run. And as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots. Like the noise of chariots. Tops of the mountain. Tops of the mountain. Shall they leap? Shall they leap? Like the noise of a flame. Like the noise of a flame. A fire. Fire. That devoured the stubble. Devoured the stubble. Man, it's going to burn up the stubble. Ain't no, and that's right. That word in us is going to go down to the root. It's going to, ain't going to leave root nor branch. It's going to burn the stubble. It's going to burn the traces of all the world and all the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. The word is going to be shut up in your mouth, shut up in your bones, come out of your mouth like a fire. It's going to devour the enemy. Go ahead. As a strong people. As a strong people. Set in battle array. These ain't the enemy. This ain't the demon army. This is God's people. As a strong people. Set in battle array. Ready. Prepared. Every man is ready. Go ahead. Before their face. Before their face. The people shall be much pain. People shall be much pain. All faces shall gather blackness. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall run like mighty men. And that's the way Elijah ran. Elijah ran like a mighty man. Didn't he? After he brought down fire from heaven and destroyed those prophets of Baal. And, and he told Ahab, get your chariot and go ahead. You know, horses. I think a human being can run huh, 20 Five miles an hour at the most. But a horse can go, I think, 45 miles an hour. As horsemen, so shall they run. Elijah, he had to, uh, if a horse could go 45, Elijah had to be going 60. <laughs> As horsemen, so shall they run. Elijah outran a chariot of horses. I'm going to put something in you that's going to outrun horses. How to, this is a supernatural arm. This has got to be God's army. This has got to be that power of the age to come that God said he would raise up. Go ahead. They shall climb the wall like men of war. Climb the walls like men of war. And they shall march everyone on his ways. March every man on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. They're not going to break their ranks. They're going to know their place. They're going to know their place in the ministry, in the body of Christ. They're not going to get out of their place. Go ahead. Neither shall one thrust another. Neither shall. And they're not going to go around there and destroy each other, hurt each other. You know, the devil probably won't do that. The devil, 
They destroy each other. But this is the one army ain't going to destroy it. They're going to get in there and find their place, and they're not going to break their ranks. Go ahead. They shall walk everyone in his path. Every, and they're going to walk in what they call, call to do, what they're chosen to do. They're going to walk in their path. Uh huh. And when they fall upon the sword. Listen. When they, I remember back in uh, 1969, Brother Taylor was telling this vision how that he saw this great revival being birthed. And he saw first darkness was everywhere, darkness that covered the land, and something happened. He saw that a spirit of the of the latter rain, the, the, uh, a liquid fire being poured out. And when all of God's people was behind this great big old wall, this great big old fence, couldn't get out, wringing their hands, wanted to do something for God, but they couldn't. But he saw something happen. He saw these people, you know, liquid fire begin to fall on them. And when it did, they were transformed. And God began to use them. And they began to bring in the ministry of healing, deliverance, healing, like Jesus. It's like a bunch of Jesus people walking around full of the power, full of faith, full of the Holy Ghost. And and, and, and dead was being raised as easy as healing the headache. The dead was being raised. So all of this. So we don't, we can't forget about these things. Then he saw a lot of it. I'm, uh, I'm just giving you a little bits, pieces. But then he saw this great revival and the devil was being hindered. Then he saw something happen. There was a great persecution come up on the church. And God's people, these was, he said, he didn't know who these people were. But later on, God showed him, these was the manifested sons of God. He saw them stand before a fire and sword. And when he stood before a fire and sword, the bullets fell just before it hit him. Fell to the ground. The bullets had no power. The bullets could not penetrate. Well, that's what he said about the sword here. In a Joel, read that. And when they fall upon the sword, when they fell upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They're not going to be see, a supernatural army. God's people, the devil, they're going to have no power over them. They're going to fall upon the sword, and the and the bullets and things are not going to be able to penetrate. Go ahead. They shall run to and fro. They shall run to and fro. In the city. In the city. They shall run upon the wall. Run upon the wall. They shall climb up on the houses. Climb up on the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. Enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The earth is going to quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. Heavens is going to tremble. What are these people? Go ahead. The sun and the moon shall be dark. Sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. The stars withdraw their shining. Go ahead. And the Lord shall utter his voice. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. Before demons. No, his army. See, this is God's army. This is the supernatural army that God is getting ready to raise up. He's going to utter his voice. This is that power of the age to come. These are things God told us many, many years ago. Now y'all wasn't around. You wasn't born again. You, now y'all probably didn't, wasn't even. <laughs> but I remember all of these things. God told us. We are the generation upon whom the ends of the world has come. We are the generation. The power of the age to come. We are the generation that's going to see a perfect storm that's going to see the full power of the Son of God. The world has been waiting for the manifestation of the Son of God. We are that generation. Thank you, Jesus. 
Read the last verse again. For his camp is very great. Uh huh. For he is strong. Yes. And executed his word. Back it up. And the Lord shall utter his That's voice. That's what And the Lord shall utter his voice. Before his army. Before whose army? His army. So whose army we've been preaching? Who, who, who been reading about? Whose army is this? In the book of Job, whose army is this? This is God's army. God told us he got something hidden from the devil. The devil don't even know about it. But God's got an army. The world has been waiting for the manifestation of this army. The manifestation of these sons of God. The son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. These sons of God are going to come on the scene. And they're going to operate under the power of these two witnesses. And they're going to go forth in the power of Jesus Christ. I don't think I'm losing y'all. For I leave this world, I want y'all to know that God has brought us here to leave us. There is a ministry. There is, and, and, and God told us, and I've told y'all, you know, ain't nobody going to be left out. God going to use everybody. He's going to use sons, daughters, servants, Handmaid, young man, old, God can use everybody. Even the children. He said, even the babes, out of the mouth of babes is going to come the perfect. The babes, the, the devil is going to have to leave when these babes are coming. Your little children, they, they're going to be lifting their hands, you know, and, and the devil is going to be driven out of folks while they're lifting their hands. And while they just, you know, the devil, you know, you, you may think that ain't nothing happening, but God's not going to use the babies. That you're going to know that it's not going to be by your might, not by your power, but by my spirit. God takes the foolish things to confound the wise. God takes the simple things, the, the, the base things, to confound the things that are mighty. God's going to use the, the, the time is short, and God's got to have him on army. He's going to use everybody. Old man don't drink drink. Young man don't see vision. Traveling in hand faith. Sons and daughters, he's going to find the spirit. You might as well get ready. God's going to use everybody. He's coming back. He's coming back for a church, for the faith, for the power, for the Holy Ghost. He's coming back for a sick church, for a weak church, a dead church. But thank God, a church that's going to be like Jesus, a church that's going to have the works of Jesus, the ministry of Jesus, the power of Jesus. The world is waiting for this manifestation. You are the generation. He said the best line for you. He said the best move for you. You are the generation that's going to see the perfect storm. Hallelujah. A lot of meat in here, man. A lot of meat in this world. Don't you slack up. Don't you get this church. Don't you let the devil cause you to get in a slump. You hear me? Where there is no vision. I'm giving you the vision. Thank you. For these last things. I'm giving you the vision. Of what God is fixing to bring you into. I'm giving you the vision. Why there is no vision, people will go to sleep. Why there is no vision, people will get slack and compromise. Why there is no vision, the devil will come in and steal, kill and destroy. But this is the vision. You put this in your heart, this in your heart. You contend for this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know I said a lot of things yesterday, but that's all right. That's all right. We need something besides sermons. We need something just something besides just patting us on the back. 
making us do. We need something from God. And that's what I'm planting in you. The seed. I'm planting the word inside of you that the devil ain't going to be able to do nothing with. This seed. This, what I call it, Brother Chuck, the incorruptible seed. This is the incorruptible seed. This is the seed. You're born again, not of the corruptible. You're not born to carry on uh, your daddy's tradition or your mama's ways, but you've been born from on high, and you're going to bring forth the DNA of Jesus. You're going to bring forth the spirit of Jesus. You're going to bring forth the nature of Jesus, the life of Jesus. If Christ is in you, then he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Stand on your feet a moment. Stand on your feet a moment. Yes, sir. Thank you. This ain't just. This ain't just, oh, this ain't something you're going to hear Sunday morning or something. I mean, you go back and listen to this again, you'll find this is nothing but the pure, unadulterated word. This is the incorruptible seed that's going to bring forth the sons of God. The sons of God. I'm giving you a lot of mysteries here tonight. Stripping you a lot of things tonight. Hope I ain't been over your head. But I made it simple enough for you to have an expected system. Huh? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Let's talk to him a few minutes. Let's talk to him. Where's the brother? Come here, man. Where's where your husband at? Court? Oh. You busy? <laughs> well, the Lord won't dismiss us in a, a good prayer. But let's everybody pray. God, help us. Help us. You brought us. You brought us to this point. You brought us to this point. And it's going to be quick. What I'm preaching tonight, you're going to find out. It's going to be quick. What I'm preaching tonight, you're going to find this is just right around the corner. That's right. Just right around the corner. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's talk to him a few minutes. Pray for us in the morning. Turn him on. Somebody turn the corner. What color is that? What color is that? What color is that? Turn him on. I'm trying to find trying out which one it is, brother. Come on, everybody, let's pray. Exactly. Let's talk to him a few minutes. Talk to him a few minutes. Okay. Come on. Come on, let's talk to the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we do thank you, Lord, for your word tonight. God, we humble ourselves, Lord, under the mighty hand of God. God, that you can have your way in us, Lord. God, that word tonight. God, that word was for each and every one of us, Lord. Here are we, Lord. God, reaching out to you by faith. God, I know, Lord, that I desire to get my house back. God, I want everything, God, that you have for me. Come on, let's talk to him. Come on, you lift up your voice. God, I want everything, Lord, that you have for me, Lord. God, there was times, Lord, when you prophesied over us, Lord. You called your, your, your holy man, Lord, to speak words over us. God, in past time, Lord, the years, God, have, have, have seemed like they went behind us. God, but right now, Lord, we're reaching out to you by faith, God. We respond. God, to this word, Lord, that you sent to us tonight. God, we want to be that people, Lord, that you pour your spirit out upon. God, we want to be, Lord, those sons and those daughters, Lord, who you move upon. Come on, let's reach out, God, right now, Lord. Stir up, Lord. Break up our follow ground. God, tonight, Lord, we desire, Lord, you said whatever we would ask in your name. God, that you would do it, Lord, in the mighty name, Lord, of Jesus Christ. God, we're reaching out to you, Lord. Tonight, Lord, I don't want you to pass us by. God, I want you, Lord, God, to cause this word, Lord, to be hidden in our hearts. God, that the enemy cannot come to steal it from us, Lord. God, we know, Lord, the enemy is coming to steal, kill, and to destroy. 
And like the man of God was saying, Lord, this word, God, is not a word that you hear on a Sunday, God, in a, in a regular service, God, but you've given us your word. You've broken bread with us tonight. God, and right now, Lord, we do eat your flesh and drink your blood. God, asking you, Lord, God, asking you, O Lamb of God, God, make way for us, make way in us, Lord, to pour out, God, those seven spirits, make way in us, Lord, that that capacity, God, on the inside of us can grow. Come on, Lord, reach out to him, God, right now. God, we're reaching out to you, Lord. Help us not to get in the tradition, God, just to end the service, Lord, but help us. God, to reach out to you by faith. Lord, right now, Lord, we know the enemy, Lord. We know these things are coming. God, we're asking you to help us, Lord. God, restore back our prayer life. God, restore back that dedication. God, restore back that fire. God, that you put down on the inside of us a time ago. God, restore back into us, Lord. God, cause our families to be saved. Cause our loved ones to be saved. Cause our marriages, Lord, to be bound up. God, in the ministry, in the re revelation of the gospel. God, right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. God, I want to be one of those, Lord. God, I want these people tonight to be one of those. Lord, hear my voice, God. God, if there be no anybody else that reach out to you. God, right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. God, I reach out to you, my faith. I reach out to you, Lord, according to your word. Jesus, right now, Lord, we need you, Lord. God, we don't want this word. God, the pastor's on the right and the left, but cause this word to go down on the inside of our soul. Right now, Lord, come on, don't, don't stop. Come on, don't make this a tradition. Come on, reach out to God. Come on, reach out with the end. Come on, press in into the kingdom of God. Like the man of God was saying, God's not just going to pour it out on us because we want it. Come on, we got to press in, Jesus. Right now, Lord, we're, we're pressing in. God, we're asking you, Lord, sing this spirit. Got a prayer, got into our prayer closets. Come on, let's see. Come on, a couple minutes. God, here are we tonight, Lord. God, we're asking you, Lord. God, we know that we can do nothing without you. God, we know, Lord, that we need your spirit. We need your spirit to stir us up on the inside. God, we need your spirit, Lord, to help us to be on fire. God, we need your spirit, Lord. God, right now, come on. Come on, don't stop. God, here are we tonight, Lord. Oh, Lamb of God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. God, return us back to that first love. God, return us back to that sacred place. God, return us back, Lord. Oh, Lord. God, to that place of righteousness. Oh, Lord, right now, cause your spirit, Lord, to go down and drive us, Lord, to fast. Cause your spirit to go down. God, and drive us to pray. Cause your spirit to go down and cause us to mourn. Oh, Lord, right now, my soul, God, it won't be satisfied. Our souls, Lord, God, it won't be satisfied. God, until you pour it out upon us. So right now, Lord, God, like the women with the issue of blood, oh, Lord, God, in one body and one faith, God, even in one baptism, God, we're reaching out to you tonight. Oh, Lord, we need you, Lord. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Press in. Jesus. Jesus. Come on. Let the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Let the Lord hear your cry. Oh, we want our house back. Oh, 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 God, we want our house back, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, come on. You're pressing in. Oh, Lord, we want our house back. God, I can feel it, Lord. I can feel, Lord, with your people reaching out to you. God, we want our house back, Lord. God, don't let this night pass. God, until you pour it out upon us. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Come on. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, come on.